Okay, so this is part two of lecture 17. We're on extension theorem, okay? So it's basically application of logarithm lemma and um, we're gonna practice the notion of homeomorphism. So first we just look at the theorem. So we're only proving this theorem for this lecture. So the statement is that for any normal space, we let A be a closed subspace then any continuous RA into AB of R can be extended to continuous map on all of X into AB. And for any continuous A into R can be continuous all of X into R. Okay, so the idea of the proof is to construct a sequence of continuous function on X where it converges uniformly to some function S. Okay, and S n restricted dot a converges to f uniformly. So S restricted on a is equal to f, and S where S is continuous by uniform convergence. Okay, so this is the big idea of the proof. So to prove it, step one is to construct G on X such that g is not too large and approximates f. So for example, when f is from a to negative r to r, we show that there exists a g such that it satisfies these two properties. Okay? So here's the construction. We're given the interval, we divide into three subinterval with length of 2 to 3 r. So we subdivide it into uh, three subinterval. Okay, and we define B to be the inverse image of F under this set, and C to be the inverse image of F under this set. Okay, so if we just look at the diagram, negative R, R, we just define like this. Right here's just, just the construction. Okay. So we let B to be the this inverse image, and we let C be this inverse image. Then there are disjoint closed sets in A. There are closed in X because A is closed in X. So by horizontal lemma, right here in normal space, then there exists a continuous function such that it's closed in X. So then we can have a continuous G on X such that GB is equal to this. And GC is equal to this. Okay? So from here, we see that GX, from here, we already have that GX is less than 1 over 3 in absolute value, right? And for this inequality, if A is in this, then GA, if A is in the first interval, and C there in the third interval, for A is not B or C, well, we know that G A must be in this. And F A for F A, right? Is the if it's not B and C, then F A is not in I one or I two. Which means that F A must be in i3 so i it must be an i2 right which means that gfa both an i2 so anyways they're both in the interval with length 2 over 3 r so we're good okay so now we start proving the theorem so part a is that for any continuous from a n to a b of r okay we can extend it to x into ab. So with a loss of generality, we replace ab with negative 1 and 1. Why? Because negative 1 and 1 and ab, they're homeomorphic. So this is the homeomorphism map. Okay? So you can verify on your own. So they're obviously continuous and they're bijective because I, I give you this inverse function. So, so they're homeomorphic. So 
if we prove if we can prove the result for negative one one, then we're good. Okay, it suffices to prove it with negative one one. So there's still some logic that is left to check. So I hope you can check it. Uh, I checked it before I record the lecture. So it is suffices to show this case because they're homeomorphic. Okay, so we let f. Uh, define from a one negative one one be a continuous map. We apply step one with r equal to one, right? So a is a g one such that we have we have those. But now, when we consider this function, right? Uh, f minus g one, it maps it maps into this interval. Then we have a g two such that we have these two conditions. So in general, we can define a sequence of GN, right? So any every time we define a new GN, we're we're squeezing we're squeezing this interval, and we're also squeezing more importantly we're squeezing this interval, right? We're squeezing this range approximate the sum, right? The sum approximates closer and closer. So now we let GX be their sum. It converges by the Cauchy criteria, okay? Since this series converges, we apply Cauchy criteria. And also, each term is bounded by this number, and this series converges, so by Weierstrass M test, Sn converges to some G, right? The, the, the sum function converges uniformly to G. So G is continuous, because the sum is continuous. And now we show that the restriction of g on a is equal to f. So for any a and a, this is equal to this, which is less than equal to this. Right? Here. <coughs> right? Here less than 2. If this is like n, right? Then it's going to be n, n. Right? It's going to be n. Right? So we have... We have this, right? We have this. This means that S A and A converges to F A, by by the uniqueness of limit G is equal to F A. And G takes value on negative one to one because it converges to one, so we're lucky, okay. By so the step three is to prove part B, whenever. A to R, we extend to X to R. But this is fine, we can replace R by negative one to one because they're homeomorphous. They're, this is, we have a homeomorphism. Why? Because this homeomorphic map is given as such. Okay, so it is homeomorphic. Now, we just let F from A to negative one to one be continuous. We now can extend F to G. Okay? Because f from a maps to this, it also maps to this. It's cut to this. So we can apply the one we just proved, we can extend it to this. Now we just let d equals to inverse image. So it takes value on the endpoints, right? So we take d to be the pre image of, of it. Now because g is continuous, then d is closed, right? Because this is a finite union of closed sets. And also, G A is equal to F A, right? Um, yep. Because it, it is an extension, right? So G A is equal to F A and lies in negative one one. Right? Because F lies in negative one one, the open interval. So which means that A and D are disjoint, right? D is closed and A is also closed. By assumption, and x is normal, we could apply the or on lemma again. We define phi such that phi on d gives zero and phi on a gives one. So now we define h to be this continuous function. We then have for any a and a, h a is equal to phi g a, but phi is equal to one. Phi g is equal to f a, so h a is equal to f a. And for x and d h x is equal to zero for x not in d um for x not in d okay we know that g 
but x is not in d, right? If x is not in d, then x maps into into negative one. Because if x is in d, then g maps to its endpoints, right? But x is not in d, then it maps to, right? If x is not in d, then it maps to the open, open interval. Right? So j is in here, and also phi x is in here, no matter what. Which means that if you multiply them, right, you see that h is still in this range. So which means that h a is equal to f a and h h takes value on negative one one and is an extension of f from a to negative one one. No, oh, wherever h is continuous. Okay, so here we have proven the extension theorem. Right, so we know that um, a normal space, well, a trisable space is normal, right? So when x, when x is equal to r, right, r has been trisable, then let a, let, this is a closed interval. So for any closed interval, right, for any, for any f from a, b, CD, right? We can extend F and G from R into CD. I mean, it's just any application, right? Because we have the general form is F for any normal space. Compact Hausdorff is normal. A regular with countable basis is normal. Metrizable space is normal. So, close subset. Yeah, so this is the theorem, okay? So that's the end of the lecture. I hope you guys enjoy. See you.